Hi, I'm Gerald and MD of Survival Top 50's Reader's Choice website, doomandbloom.net, with over a thousand articles, podcasts, and videos on medical preparedness. Together with my wife, Amy Alton, an advanced registered nurse practitioner, we're the authors of the Book Excellence Award winner in medicine, The Survival Medicine Handbook, now in its 700-page third edition. Also, the brand new book, Alton's Antibiotics and Infectious Disease, The Layman's Guide to Available Antibacterials in Austere Settings. Matter of fact, that subtitle tells you all you need to know about it, as well as the designers of an entire line of medical kits at store.doomandbloom.net. Last time we began a discussion on asthma. Asthmatic symptoms may be different from attack to attack and from individual to individual. Some of the symptoms are also seen in heart conditions and other respiratory illnesses, so it's important to make the right diagnosis. Symptoms may include cough, shortness of breath, wheezing, usually pretty suddenly starting, and chest tightness. Now that sometimes is confused with coronary artery spasms and it's very important to be able to tell the difference. You'll also see a rapid pulse rate, respiration rate, and usually your patient is very anxious. Now besides these main symptoms, there are others that are signals of a life-threatening episode. If you notice that your patient is becoming cyanotic, they're in trouble. Someone with cyanosis will have a blue-gray color to their lips, their fingertips, and their face. You'll notice that it takes longer for them to exhale than to inhale. Their wheezing may take on even a higher pitch than when it first started. Now, once the patient has spent enough time without adequate oxygen, they'll become confused, then drowsy, and then possibly lose consciousness. Use your stethoscope medics to listen to the lungs on both sides. Make sure that you listen closely to the bottom, middle, and top chest areas and compare one side to the other. In a mild asthmatic attack, you'll hear relatively loud musical noises when the patient exhales. As the asthma worsens, less air is passing through the airways, and the pitch of the wheezes will be higher and maybe not as loud. Of course, if no air is passing through, well, you're not going to hear anything, and not even when you ask the patient to inhale forcibly. This person is in trouble. Here's an audio. Here's what normal lung sounds are like near the bases in someone without asthma. Now here are asthmatic lung sounds. Notice that most of them occur in the expiration phase. Recognizing lung sounds on stethoscope is just a small part of what we teach during our eight-hour survival medicine classes. It's important to learn basic physical examination skills now because lab tests and other high technology just won't be around in a major long-term disaster. You'll be surprised with what you can diagnose. The cornerstones of asthma treatment are, one, the avoidance of allergens that trigger attacks, and two, the maintenance of an open airway. Medications come in one or two forms, drugs that give quick relief from an attack and drugs that control the frequency of asthmatic episodes. Group members with asthma should have accumulated a good collection of inhalers. These are quick relief drugs that open airways known as bronchodilators and they include brand names such as Ventolin, Albuterol, and Preventil among many others. These drugs should open airways in a very short period of time and give significant relief. They're very important to have on hand. Don't be surprised if you notice a rapid heart rate on these medications. It's a very common side effect. By the way, physicians are usually sympathetic to requests for extra prescriptions from their asthmatic patients, so you might be able to stockpile some of this stuff. If you find yourself using quick relief asthmatic medications more than twice a week, you might be a candidate for some kind of daily control therapy to decrease the frequency of episodes. These drugs work when taken daily to decrease the number of episodes, indeed, and are usually some form of steroid. There are long-acting bronchodilators as well, such as Atrovent, as well as other drugs. Often medications will be used in combination, and you might find multiple medications in the same inhaler, such as Advair or Simbicort. 
There are a number of natural remedies for asthma as well. And in survival settings, you may end up with only these options to help the asthmatics in your family or group. We'll talk about those in our next video. This is Joe Alton, MD, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health in good times or bad. Thanks for watching. Hey, don't forget to fill those holes in your medical storage by checking out Nurse Amy's entire line of medical kits at store.doomandbloom.net. That's store.doomandbloom.net. You'll be glad you did.